Until the late 19th century, around one ship every day was mysteriously lost at sea. The ship's disappearance may be blamed on pirates, mythological krakens, or even Poseidon back then. That number has dropped as shipping has progressed and new technologies have been introduced. However, even in 2005, at least two ships per week continued to suffer abrupt disasters, resulting in the loss of many lives at sea. Who or what is to blame for these heinous acts? It's all about killers, namely killer waves. Scientists still don't know how to predict them, much less how to avoid them. You'll see how waves play life or death chess with ships in this video. Why do 30 meter breaks exist against mathematicians' estimates? And more importantly, what is the secret of the killer wave's flawless crimes? The killer wave, myth or reality? For a long time, killer waves were thought to be fiction due to their unusual behavior. When conventional waves are propelled by the wind, their speed and height gradually rise, but this is not the case with killer waves. Suddenness, elusiveness, and grandeur are their principal weapons. Scientists used to believe that a breaker exceeding 21 meters high was simply impossible to find in the world's waters, therefore sailors' tales of phantom waves were dismissed as fanciful. According to present beliefs, the possibility of such waves is nil. They may only occur once every 10,000 years at most, however sailors' experiences and satellite data show that such waves are not uncommon. These rogue waves, according to some sources, appear every two days. The tragedy involving the ship Esso Longado in 1980 was the sole thing that removed scientific doubt about the issue. The researchers had the first and nearly only reported appearance of such a wave at the time. It was documented in a photograph shot by Philippe Ledet, senior assistant to the tanker captain of the Esso Langado. He captured a photo of a 30-meter-high wave that appeared out of nowhere. When the scale of the wave in the shot was compared to the mast of the tanker, the myth of killer waves became a reality. Imagine a nine-story wheeled structure slamming into you at 120 km per hour to get a sense of the ferocity of such a wave. You won't have time to upload it on Instagram. Scientists have no written confirmation of the killer wave's existence except from the images. The inquiry has come to a halt once more. How did researchers get a lead on the killer wave? On January 1, 1995, a huge wave was observed and recorded at the Dropna oil platform in the North Sea. It was one of the first reliable measurements of a freak wave in the ocean, and at a height of 25.6 meters, it was over two times the height of the waves that surrounded it. Appearing seemingly from nowhere, this seminal observation initiated many years of research into the possible causes of freak ocean waves. Various theories exist, perhaps the most simple of which is that ocean waves are random, and while freak waves are rare, they are entirely possible. Other theories have suggested that under certain conditions, waves can become unstable, causing small waves to grow into much larger freak waves. Before Dropner, wave researchers believed that the distribution of wave heights roughly followed the famous bell-shaped Gaussian curve. According to this theory, extreme waves such as this one would occur once every 1,000 or 10,000 years. But when Dropner E was hit by nearly a 26-meter high wave, which was very surprising in a sea that otherwise had a significant wave height of 12 meters, the Gaussian theory was refuted. Significant wave height is the average of the highest third of waves within a 20-minute period. Later measurements have confirmed that monster waves occur much more frequently than the Gaussian theory suggests. Therefore, wave researchers have started using non-linear theories when they calculate wave heights. What is the pattern of crime of each killer wave? Scientists have identified four different types of killer waves, each of which offers a deadly threat, but which is the most dangerous? A lone wave or water wall that appears out of nowhere in a seemingly calm sea strikes and then vanishes just as quickly. It can flood the upper deck, all devices, and burst through a cargo hold if it smashes from above. That's what usually ends up being deadly for most ships. That's the type of killer the cruise liner Norwegian Dream ran into on its journey. The wave slammed against the ship's bow and the ship would have capsized if it had slammed into it a little more tangentially. Only three of such waves combined are more terrifying than a wave like that. Three sisters are three waves in a row, with the middle one being the most powerful. They repeatedly hit a ship, easily capsizing it and amplifying the force of each subsequent impact. That's what happened to the Willstar, a big Norwegian tanker. As you can see, there was a lot of damage. 
We're conditioned to believe that a wave is always above sea level, although this isn't always the case. The finest example of this is the following deadly wave, a hole in the sea as it's called. Two average height waves emerge initially, followed by a deep trench between them. When the bow or stern of a ship enters such a hole, the ship can become submerged in the water column and sink immediately. If the ship hits two neighboring crests at the same time, it'll split in half. Square waves, on the other hand, are known for being the most unique type of killer wave. Rescue aircraft captured these photographs of the Grand Voyager cruise line floating aimlessly with a river and swaying from side to side. On the water's surface, square waves connect at nearly right angles, generating a checkerboard pattern. The waves encircle a vessel like a vice on all four sides, forming a true sea trap with little opportunity of escape. Can we avoid being attacked by the killer wave? Can we at the very least forecast the recurrence of such waves if death is the most likely outcome? A 30-meter wave is something that mankind has yet to find out how to endure. The only way to avoid a spontaneous killer is to stay away from it, but the technology to predict where and when such a wave will strike is still being developed. To explore killer waves, a European multinational project called MaxWave was initiated in the year 2000. Satellite-based ocean surface monitoring utilizing the European Space Agency's ERS-1 and ERS-2 radar satellites were one of the approaches deployed. Scientists discovered that in just three weeks, more than 10 huge solitary waves with heights over 25 meters occurred in the ocean based on satellite footage. Wave Atlas, a new project based on Max Wave, has been released. The project's creators are working on compiling a global map of all known rogue wave episodes. They next conduct statistical analysis to establish the frequency of their appearance and the most prevalent locations where they may be found. Wave Atlas will assist ships in finding an ideal and safe course in the Agullus Current off Bermuda Cape Horn, the Grand Banks of Newfoundland and the Greek coast, for example. Although one theory for the occurrence of killer waves is that nearby waves amalgamated to form one large wave, the scientific community is still out of its depth in trying to fully understand the mystery of killer waves, which means the project's calculations can't guarantee 100% accuracy. How to escape the killer wave? So, how can we get away from a deadly wave? Gunter Steinmeier, an ocean wave expert and professor at the Max Born Institute, feels that the most precise instrument for detecting killer waves was created a long time ago. A window in a drilling platform or a porthole in a ship is what it's called. However, the most important thing is to check outside in good time. Even if you see a deadly wave approaching, it'll slam into your ship and sink it in one fell swoop before you realize it. But it isn't the only danger. Other things such as a sudden realization that you're 30 years old and still living with your parents, or a song that brings up memories of a nasty breakup, might hit you unexpectedly and are also difficult to escape. Unburden your emotions in the comment section about the brutal waves that swept over you. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please do let me know by clicking the like button, do share a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch up on my next video.